Hello, friends. Welcome back to DigiTalk and the first part of virtualization in cloud computing. In this video, I am going to cover the basic concepts of virtualization. Right. So virtualization is also called the base of cloud computing because your cloud computing is compute completely based on the virtualization. The whatever the benefits that we are getting from the cloud computing as of today, that is due to the uh, technology of virtualization. OK, so I will give you a complete overview of virtualization in this video. And then in subsequent video, we will go for the uh, cloud computing lectures. Now, what is virtualization? So virtualization called as a technique for proper consolidation and utilization of IT resources that also called as an unused system resources. So now what is mean the unused system resources and then con consolidation and utilization of all the IT resources. OK, so let us take the example of your own personal PC or maybe the, your mobile device. OK, personal laptop. What is the configuration of that one? So let us suppose that it is a one terabyte of storage and 60 uh, GB of memory and there could be eight core on that one. OK, it could be more for you or maybe less for you. OK, but if I would talk to you that like if I will say you that. What is the utilization of that one? So in terms of storage, memory, cores or, or whatever the hardware configurations are there, if you compare your utilization, it would not go more than 50 percent. OK, so if I talk about the total population across the world the, the, and that means that across the world, the total people those are using the personal laptop PCs or devices, OK, their utilization is not so much of high. It would not go beyond 50, 60 or 70 percent. That means it's still you are wasting certain resources. If I take the example of one terabyte of storage, 16 GB of memory, eight core, and if the utilization is 50%, that means you are wasting almost 50% of resources. And this is practically true across the world. In fact, it is not about your personal PCs or laptop. If you go to any organizations, if they are using the dedicated hardware for, for every employee, even you go for the uh, education sector or in any sector where the, the students or the employees, the people are using the dedicated so hardware, okay, there are they are wasting the n number of resources in terms of storage, memories, and cores, and other things, okay? Because the utilization is not up to the configurations that is given along with the hardware and software, right? So now you can think about the e-waste across the world, how much resources we are using uh, and how much resources we are wasting across the world, okay? So this is not a viable or feasible or practical solution when we go for an organization or in a professional environment because every business is for the profit, right? So if you are in a business and then uh, you want to make the profit from your business, then you will not want to waste such kind of a resources, right? So that means you need a certain kind of a technology where you can eliminate the wastage of such kind of a resources, right? So this is the first thing. Now, second thing, uh, I'm sure you are aware, aware about what is exactly a data center. Data center is a location, either it is a building where you are all the organization hardware and software are running, right? So when we talk about the data center, okay, then think about the cost of a data center, right? So you have a room. In fact, not about a room. You have a complete building for data center where you have a multiple rooms and that building may be owned by you or maybe you have taken on the, on the rent. From somewhere but but you are doing a huge investment on the rent you are doing a huge investment on your own building their maintenance of the building right regular maintenance of the building securities and everything apart from that in a data center you have a lot of servers you have a lot of storage you have a lot of racks for uh, storage and servers then you have multiple acs wires elect networking and complexity switches power and backup electricity number of engineers to to uh, to uh, to support your uh, hardware and applications right and then apart from that you, know, you can if if you consider the total cost of a data center you think what is the investment that an organization is doing <clears throat> in a data center in terms of all these parameters right so is there any solution to deal with this me this Right? Because I am doing a huge investment in such kind of a setup of my IT environment. So I need a certain solution for to, to eliminate the waste from my environment and to save my cost. Right. So for that one, you have a technology virtualization along with the cloud computing. OK, so let us talk about that one, uh, uh, the virtualization. OK, what exactly it does in the virtualization? This is one of the example. OK, I have a big machine, a big physical machine with the, the large storage, for example, two terabyte of storage, 16 GB of memory and 16 core, right? 
From that one physical machines, I can create three virtual machines. That means three different machines, okay, that I'm calling as a virtual machine that I'm going to clear in the next uh, uh, few slides. Okay, so those will be the virtual machine, but for end user, it will act as a dedicated machine because it will have own operating systems and all the applications just like we have in a physical server. Okay, so what we can do in that case is that suppose the requirement for all three virtual machines or for the three machines is 50 GB of storage, 8 GB of memory and four core, then I can have a single physical server. Okay, uh, which would have two terabyte of storage. So from two terabyte, I can allocate 50 GB, 500 GB to each server and still I will have 50 GB as a buffer. 16 GB of memory I can allocate, okay, uh, to uh, different three servers. Okay, the calculation is a bit wrong here. You can consider it as a 36 GB of RAM. Okay, and in three servers, I can divide 8 GB of RAM, that is total 24. And if I divide that, if I say that total RAM of my physical server is 36, then still I have 12 GB of RAM is in buffer. Okay, and the 16 core out of that, I could have a uh, eight core into divided to my three virtual machines. Okay, and then still I have my uh, rest of the cores are available as a buffer. So what is the meaning of buffer is that if any of the machine any time need the higher configuration, I can allocate from the buffer to that particular machine. So there could be a chance that some of the machines may need the higher configuration at a specific time when certain load is coming. There would some maybe possible that some jobs are running at a particular day or a particular uh, uh, time in a day or in a week or in a month, right? So at that time, it needs the higher configurations. But apart from that, the rest of the day, it needs the minimum configurations, right? So at that time, when the requirement of that particular virtual machine is for the higher configuration, so that, that I can allocate from the physical server or we can say from the buffer so this is a certain kind of example of the virtualization so now what are the benefits if i am saying that i have a single physical server instead of uh, of the three physical servers where i am dividing one physical server into three virtual machines okay and this is one of the example of single physical server can be divided into multiple virtual machines which will act as an independent service right so now you if you see the example of uh, what are the benefit of this one, if I'm saying that instead of a three machines, I have only single physical machine, then you need a less room size. You need less number of servers, physical servers. You need less storage, less number of racks, less AC because your server is getting reduced. So AC count will also get reduced. If the physical machine is getting reduced, that means less networking complexity, less wiring, less number of switches, less power backup, right? And less number of engineers and definitely the less cost, right? This is one of the very basic example of virtualization where what I'm saying is that we have reduced the total number of physical servers from your data center. So if you are reducing the total number of physical servers from the data center, then obviously you are going, going to get the benefit on all of these parameters. Right. Now, let us talk about the basic system architecture. Okay. So what is our basic system architecture? If you go for any laptop, computer instance or desktop, okay, we have a hardware. Okay. And then on top of hardware, we install our operating system, whether it is a Windows, Linux or whatever. And then on top of that, we install the different software. So this is the basic, very basic architecture of a uh, machine. Right. But when we talk about the virtualization, where one server act as one server act as multiple servers. Okay, as I said in the previous slide that we have a one physical server that I can divide into multiple virtual machine, which will act as an independent machine for the end users, right? So we have a two type of uh, uh, hypervisors, what we call in the virtualization. Okay, so type one, in the type one, we have a hardware. So let us compare it with the basic architecture. Okay, so we have a hardware. Okay, on top of the hardware, we need a certain kind of a virtualization technique. Okay, and with the help of this virtualization technique, we can convert a single physical machine into multiple independent virtual machines. In the figure, you can see that what I am doing is that I have a simple hardware, physical server, physical server. On top of that, I need a certain kind of a virtualization technique. And once that virtualization technique is in place, I can create multiple virtual machines from using the virtualization technique. So in picture, you can see that I am creating three virtual machines Okay, so in each virtual machine, I can install the operating system and on top of that, I can install the software. And one of the beauty you can see here is I have a physical hardware on top of that, I'm installing the virtualization technique. And when I'm creating the different virtual machines on top of that one, I can have a different operating system on the virtual machines. So virtual machine one could have Windows operating system, window and then virtual machine two can have 
uh, Linux operating system and similarly Windows 3, 4, 5, 6 can have a different operating system. So that, that means from a single hardware, from a single physical hardware, I am creating the different machines, different virtual machines with the different operating systems. Now, again, there is another option that is called type 2. In type 2, we have a simple hardware. On top of hardware, we install the operating system like it's a Linux or a Windows or whatever. OK, so if I compare it with the type one, what I was doing in the type one, I was installing the virtualization technique directly on the top of my hardware, physical hardware, right? In type two, what I'm doing is that on top of my hardware, I'm installing the operating system. And then on top of my operating system, I am installing the virtualization techniques, right? And then I am dividing my physical hardware into multiple machines. So the difference you can clearly see here on type one, we have a hard physical hardware and that we are installing the virtualization technique directly on top of my hardware. And then we are creating the virtual machines. When we talk about type two, we installed operating system on top of my hardware and then we installed the virtualization technique. And then with the help of that virtualization technique, we can create different virtual machines and that can have different operating systems, right? <clears throat> so what we call to this virtualization technique that is called a hypervisor. OK, so if we have a type one hypervisor where what I'm where what I was saying is that we have a hardware and then on top of hardware, we directly install a software. So if you are installing the direct software hypervisor directly on top of my hardware, that is called type one or it is also called a bare metal or native. OK, this is mostly used in the cloud computing that what kind of a uh, machines or compute you need on the cloud cloud, whether you want a bare metal. OK, so uh, so this is a bare metal. So if uh, someone is telling you that a bare metal machine, that means you are using a type one hypervisor where you have a hypervisor software directly installed on top of your hardware and top type two hypervisor be installed on top of our OS. OK, so that is called a type two hypervisor, which is installed on the OS. OK, so what we are saying is now this is the architecture of simple virtualization. OK, so we have three physical servers. OK, and all three physical servers are uh, connected to a shared storage. And what I'm doing is from each physical server, I am creating the different virtual machines. So from physical server one, I have created three virtual machines from physical server two. Again, I have created three virtual machines and from uh, three third physical server, I have created a three virtual machine. So that means total I have created nine virtual machines. OK, so those will act as the independent servers. So now where I I was requirement, I was having the requirement of nine physical servers. Now I need only the three physical servers. OK, so that means I'm splitting my three physical servers into nine uh, uh, virtual machines and then the underlying resources could have been shared. That means there could be a shared storage across all the physical servers and that storage is getting shared across my all virtual machines. OK, in similar way, there are a lot of resources in your uh, physical machines. You can have your uh, memory, RAM, you can have your cores, okay? And every resources can be shared across the different virtual machines in different proportion, okay? So what is virtualization? So virtualization is technology that allow you to create multiple simulated environment or dedicated resources from a single physical hardware. So you have a single physical hardware or a machine from that you are creating the multiple independent virtual machine, which will act as a independent server. Software called a hypervisor connect directly to that hardware and allow you to split one system into separate, distinct and secure environment as virtual machine. So what we are doing is we are using a hypervisor and with the hyper with the help of hypervisor, we are creating the different virtual machines and the physical hardware equipped with the hypervisor is called the host, while the many virtual machine that uses resources are guest. OK, so the physical hardware which we are dividing into multiple machines that can be defined as a host and all the virtual machines can be defined as a guest machines. OK, and these VMs rely on the hypervisor's ability to separate the machine resources from the hardware and distribute them properly. Right. So if you have a single physical machine and we have allocated a certain amount of storage, RAM, cores and different kind of resources to a single physical. And when I'm saying that I am creating three virtual machines from the physical server, that means I have to distribute the portion of the RAM, cores, storage and some other hardware resources to each and every server in the some similar proportion. OK, so this is the virtualization technique. Now, if what we say, if, if what are the benefits of virtualization? OK, so first one is the guest VM treat computing resources like CPU, memory and storage as a pool of resources that can easily be relocated. That means all the underlying resources of your physical machine will be act as a pool. So any of the machines require the higher configuration at any moment that can be shared or relocate to the 
any virtual machine at any time. Operators can control virtual instances of CPU, memory, storage, and other resources. So guests receive the resources they need when they need them. Right. So whenever you need any kind of a higher uh, configuration that can be easily uh, relocate to your virtual machines allows admin to perform mass configurations update and security checks on all virtual machines so now instead of a multiple machines i have a single dedicated physical machine so i can have the liberty so i can populate the configurations and update to all virtual machines from a single physical server at any time with minimum efforts right virtualization help you get the most value from previous investment okay so virtualization as i said this is a uh, hyper hypervisor kind this is a kind of a virtualization technology that installed on top of hardware so even you are using the servers which you have bought 20 years or 30 years back okay you can still install your hypervisor on top of that and you can utilize your old hardware okay better time management buying installing and configuring a new system is costly as and a waste of time right so we are doing a better time management because now instead of uh, the management of uh, multiple physical servers you end up you are doing the management of only limited physical servers right so with fewer physical servers to manage and troubleshoot it it team can allocate their time and effort to more important strategic operations so now you have a less number of resources that means you need a less number of resources in your in terms of your employees right and then they will uh, have to dedicate the less time on the management of your it resources and then they can spare their time for some other activities so virtualized environments also allow automation for tasks like installation upgradation and maintenance especially in data centers thus making the work environment far more efficient and productive and with the help of virtualization technologies you can do a lot of automations for the generic tasks that we do like installation upgrade maintenance patching etc that can easily be automated VMs with the different operating systems can run on the same physical server. So as I said, I have a single physical hardware. On top of that, I'm creating the different virtual machines. And each virtual machines can have a different operating systems. Live migrations allow you to move an entire running virtual machine from one physical server to another with no downtime. This is one of the great benefit of the virtualization where one virtual machine can move to different virtual machines at the live time. That means if uh, suppose that you have a, uh, two physical servers and first physical server having three virtual machines and if any virtual machine get crashed, that machine will be migrated to the another physical server. Okay, so this is called the live migration of your virtual machines and that is very helpful when you are going for uh, for the maintenance of a certain, certain critical applications where you need to bring down your virtual machines and applications. So for maintenance of your virtual machines for any kind of a, uh, upgrades, you can migrate your virtual machine to a different physical server. Then you can do the uh, your upgrades, your configuration changes, and then you can bring your original virtual machine to the physical server one again back. This is called the live migration. So this is these are the certain important benefits of the virtualization. Okay, so that means you are reducing capital and operating costs, minimizing or eliminating downtime, increasing IT productivity, efficiency, agility, and responsiveness, faster provisioning of applications and resources, greater business continuity and disaster recovery, and simplified data center management. So this, this is all about the virtualization, the basic concept of virtualization, and stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching this video.